Now, obviously, for an image like this, you're not going to want to go through and use the uh, and use the stamp. You just press S to get to the uh, stamp tool to fix everything because that would take a really long time, and you know you have that problem of human error. Like, could I get done fairly quickly? Yes, but it would take a while. Uh, so I'm going to show you a filter that uh, is good for instances where it's really obvious dust and scratches. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first combine these two layers. And in order to do that, um, I could flatten the image. I've shown you how to do that before. Uh, but if you select both of them, you can also merge layers. And what's good about merge layers is instead of combining every layer in the project into a single layer, it only combines the layers that you've selected. So in this instance, it's exactly the same thing, but it is another way to go about it. All right, so first things first, I'm duplicating this layer. You can see me doing that right there. And the reason I do that is because if it messes up, I can always just delete the layer and start over. All right, so I'm gonna go into Filter, Noise, uh, Dust and Scratches, which works well for dust and scratches. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna up the settings. That's too much. I'm gonna up the settings, kind of bring back some of the detail. I'm gonna lower these settings. Just kind of playing around with it, trying not to lose too much information while at the same time getting rid of all the dust and scratches. What this um, filter is looking for is it's looking for things that don't, uh, don't really fit that kind of break the pattern of what the background is. So I'm going to say that's actually, you know, let's strengthen it a little bit more actually. A little bit more. Oh, no, a little bit more. And whenever you're messing with any of the filters, um, can you understand them at a fundamental level? Yes, absolutely. There's always something going on under the surface. Is it absolutely necessary for most of them? Nah, just know that there's two filters and be happy with that. Uh, or two sliders and be happy with that. All right, let's see. Maybe this will be about right. Yeah, this looks to be pretty good to me. All right, so before, after. So you can see that all the, the dust is gone. However, we are running into a few problems. You'll notice that the tie, for instance, we've lost all of the detail of that. Um, you'll notice the same thing for the eyes and the mouth. Um, that we're losing all the details. So we're going to use the same trick here that we used for the color adjustment layers. We're just going to erase out the part of this top layer that we don't want. So going to the eraser tool, E for eraser, I'm going to decrease the size of this brush and I'm just going to erase out this eye, I'm going to erase out this mouth, I'm going to erase out this mouth and because we have it, uh, that looks creepy, and because we have it on a soft edge, just make sure that your um, eraser is on as soft of edge as possible. When we turn on this background layer, it just kind of fades in. So if we were to have it with them both on, I'm just going to erase out part of this tie, and it's as if the detail is just magically heading back there. Here, I notice we're losing some detail. Um, Let's turn this on and off to see where else. On oh, the buttons, we're losing some of the detail. The decrease the size. I don't want to go too far because I know that if I erase too much, I'm going to accidentally bring back some of the dust, and I don't want that. So I'm going to do this button as well. And again, all that we're doing is just erasing out little parts of this layer. And because there's such a soft edge on the eraser, it creates the illusion that there's no hard edge. Let me show you what happens if you accidentally do have a hard edge. Um, all right, so this ear, there's a problem. I have a hard edge on this right now. I press shift square bracket to get that. And you can see, can you see? All right, well, it's pretty tough to see that there's an edge right there. You can see that it's different in this um, because they're exactly the same image. Uh, here, I'm gonna zoom in just to see if it's recognizable. And, you know, it's, it's very difficult to see. So you're just gonna have to take my word that you always want a soft edge because it just makes it so it fades from one to the other. Um, you're not going to get that abrupt, this is one image, this is another image, which is what we go for. Uh, and then after that's done, I'm gonna go back to the clone stamp. I'm gonna create a new layer, always do the clone stamp on a new layer above, and just, uh, just hit Alt, and again, remember to constantly sample. Almost before every single stroke, you wanna do another sample. Um, just to make sure that you don't have problems where it becomes obvious that you're using the clone stamp tool. All right, so that finishes this session. Oh, hold up. 
Uh, that finishes this session uh, talking about the clone stamp tool and introducing you to brushes, what's possible with them, and how to use them. If you're only to take one thing out of this session, take the knowledge that using the square brackets can increase the size of a brush, decrease the size of a brush, and shift square brackets can increase the hardness and decrease the hardness. All right, I'll see you in the next lesson.